Welcome back to our channel. Are you dreaming of working or studying abroad but on the fence about how to start prepping for the IELTS test? Fear not. We are here to simplify your preparation journey. In this video, we will take you through the test structure and format for the IELTS exam. We'll walk you through the four key sections: listening, reading, writing and speaking. While we introduce you to each of these sections, we will also share insider facts that will help you score well. We will also discuss the scoring guidelines explaining how you will be graded and how these scores will be combined to give you a overall band score. By the end of this video, you will be a confident test taker in no time. So let's get started. This entire course is about um, IELTS, which is IELTS, and uh, it's an English proficiency test. I think most of you, uh, before you start with the preparation, at least a bit of or a little bit of you know research you must have done to understand what this you know what IELTS test is, because uh, it's not just one English proficiency test you have, right? Which you can take. You have other options as well. You have other tests as well, like you have TOEFL, you have PT, you have Duolingo. When we talk about IELTS test, first of all, I believe this is, uh, I mean, one of the tests which is demanded by the university and is accepted all over the world. And most of the English speaking, I think, countries, if you're actually, you know, coming from a country where English is not the first language, you will have to take this test to just show the people. That means to just show the universities or the colleges that, yes, I know how to communicate in this language. Communication means, see, uh, if, if I'm speaking, right? So this is also, uh, maybe I'm, I'm trying to say something, I'm trying to convey a message, right? That means I'm trying to communicate with you. And this is through speaking. You, I'm speaking and you are listening to me, right? So this is the mechanism. This is the process of communication. And that is what they want to see that before they give, they give you some sort of acceptance or they, you know, just, they give you a great signal that, yeah, you are welcome to my college or welcome to my country. They want to see that if you can follow the language when you come here to reside, because it is, I mean, I believe that, uh, language barrier can be the biggest problem in anybody's life. I mean, if you, if you don't in anyone's life, I mean, if you don't understand the language of the other person, Obviously, no message can be conveyed and you won't be able to follow anything. Thus, let's start. So now we are, what we are going to cover in this module. So our agenda, that means uh, we'll be learning about, uh, you know, more about IELTS test. It's just not limited to that. It's just an English proficiency test, of course. Right. Then you have uh, also the test structure and format. Right. Next, you have the different sections of the test. Right. Now you can see here itself. It's mentioned the listening section, reading section, writing section and speaking section. If you remember a few minutes back, I mentioned that they are testing your communication skill. And I mentioned that I am speaking and you are listening. So the two sections on the test is going to be the listening and the speaking section. Right. And other than that, you will also have reading and writing. And these are the four ways how you how we communicate with each other. That means how this communication process goes. That means listening, reading, writing and speaking. Either you will convey your message right to the other person right through maybe speaking or maybe with writing, right? If you're writing a mail or if you're writing a text message to your friend, you're trying to, you know, say something or trying to pass a message. You're trying to give a message. You're trying to say something. That means your, the form of, you know, the form of uh, conveying your message to your friend is what? The written form. That is the writing part. We will also learn about the scoring guidelines. Okay, so the scoring guidelines here, we will just learn about, uh, you know, uh, what are the scoring on how many correct answers you should have, right, to get a desired band or to get the desired score. We will learn about it in a very elaborate manner, right, maybe in, uh, maybe in the, some other model. That means for listening, reading, writing and speaking, for all of them, we have different, you know, what we call as band descriptors and we will understand these band descriptors separately. So starting with all about IELTS. So what you must know. First of all, what is IELTS? What it stands for? So it stands for International English Language Testing System. And um, this is how we can elaborate. But most of the people, I mean, you whenever you say that I will, I am going to take International English Language Testing System, you will just say that I'm going to take IELTS test. 
right and uh, this test is conducted by uh, idp education limited um, and it's a company basically i mean idp is responsible for conducting the test you know worldwide uh, you must have heard about british council as well so earlier i mean uh, i think few years back idp and british council i think jointly they used to conduct the test right that, that means you would have booked your test uh, you know uh, using british council's website or you could have booked your test or using idp but now it's just idp that means they have this monopoly here uh, while conducting the test remember that this organization is only conducting the test and the questions are not prepared by idp people that means the question is prepared by cambridge assessment right so they have uh, the, the you know they have just responsibility of booking the test giving you the slot the centers the date and everything i mean whoever now when we talk about the evaluators or who are going to check so the answers are basically checked by idp evaluators only that means for each section be it listening writing speaking or uh, reading right the questions are checked by the people who are examiners and they are hired by these idp people only that means they are hired by the idp organization only now the duration of the test is it going to be of 3 hours or 4 hours no the test will be of 2 hours 45 minutes and that means you can say in a combined way the test is conducted i mean uh, it will last for another 2 hours and 45 minutes now being more precise here the test will consist of four different sections right um the test is also conducted in two different phases you must know this right and all the sections whatever you have here the four different sections will just check your english proficiency skill right that means this test is designed in a manner that it will show the you know it will actually give you a report or maybe uh, you know it will actually generate a report will which will show you that how proficient you are in this language that is the reason we call it as an english proficiency skill test that means which will test your or which will evaluate your english proficiency level and give you a score accordingly the test is conducted in two phases that means for listening reading and writing which we generally refer as lrw that means remember it as lrw so listening reading and writing is taken in one phase that means will be conducted in one phase and speaking is taken separately and that means the entire test right beat lrw plus speaking that means listening reading writing plus speaking this and the entire duration of the test is going to be 2 hours 45 minutes next you can take the test i mean offline which is the paper based format or you can take it uh, you know online that means computer based format i think uh, recently i have seen a trend right most of the student they prefer taking the test you know come on computer based obviously both of both computer based and paper based they have their own pros and cons which we'll discuss and other than that uh, i think paper based as the name itself suggests that you will have to write your answers and on the computer that means on cbt formats so you can just remember this as a cbt format or a pbt format many a time students they ask that ma'am should i go for pbt format or the cbt format that means should i book my test as paper based format or Or should I take it like computer-based format? It is completely your call. I mean, no, this is this is a time when I think most of you are aware of you know how to read the passages or maybe how to solve the questions on system. There must not be any hesitance in uh, solving the questions on system. However, I still believe that some students they believe that no, I think I can perform better. That means I can do better if I take the test in a paper-based format. And that is what it's again your wish. it's your decision you have to decide but uh, before you take a final call on selecting whether the test should be a paper based format or you should go for computer based format right practice in both the manner and see that means practice both offline and online and see how much comfortable you are if you take the pbt format of the test so it will take you should remember this for the pbt format you will get the score in maybe 12 to 13 days and if you take the computer based test that means the cbt format you can receive your score maybe in 4 to 
five days only. So, and that's that's the major difference between the PBT format and the CBT format. Somebody who says that, okay, I have deadline approaching. I mean, I have, uh, you know, one of my university has deadline on, let's say, 20th of November or maybe 15th of November. And I will have to take this test immediately. So definitely the student should go for the CBT format only rather than selecting the paper based format. But if you have time, if you know that, okay, anytime soon, maybe next one month, I have to take the test, right? So start with the preparation. And while you're preparing, if you know that you have time for preparation as well as waiting for another 2 and 10 to 12 days to get the result, go ahead with the paper based format. It's okay. And it's all about your comfort. Are you, are you comfortable in writing your response? Because when you say paper based format, that means you have to write your answers instead of typing it. When you say computer based format, that means CBT, you have to type your answers and a few of the differences also we will be able to see, uh, you know, uh, on the listening section. Other than that, the reading, writing and uh, speaking, obviously, but for speaking test, I would say whether you take the PPT format or the CPT format is going to be completely same. There is no difference. Both in both the format, you will find that you have to, you know, it will be like kind of an in semi formal uh, interview with the person and it will be face to face also. Now, let's talk about the test structure. Um, so basically IELTS, you will find, uh, mostly people say either I'm going to take IELTS general or I'm going to take IELTS academy. So these are the two common things which I have seen, um, here in, uh, you know, in India, I would say, right? Life skills, IELTS life skills is basically, uh, to get that certificate that I know how to communicate in this language. And, uh, I would say that there's specific reason if anyone is uh, willing to take IELTS life skill test. Now the general and the academic, what is first, this is what we'll understand first, the differences. That means who should actually take IELTS general and who should actually take IELTS academic. So general IELTS general is basically taken by um, people who want to go for like like who wants to go for uh, you know kind of um, getting a PR for a country. Like if you want to get a PR in Canada, right? You will have to take IELTS general, not the academic. The name itself suggests that IELTS academic is taken for. Uh, maybe is taken mostly by students who want to uh, go for their higher studies, be it like undergrad or maybe masters or some MBA courses or anything, right? So for those who want to undertake non-academic training or gain work experience, right, will have to take IELTS general. Whereas for those who want to study or practice in an English speaking country will have to take IELTS academic. And for those who need to prove their English skills at a common European framework of reference for languages that is CFR, right, they will have to take life skills. But I think uh, this is just for your knowledge. Um, if you are uh, actually taking this, uh, you know, you're, you're obviously preparing for an academic purpose. That means you want to move, uh, you know, abroad for your higher studies. So for you, this is the only area of concern. That means you just have to focus on IELTS Academy. Other than that, for the IELTS general test, right, it can be used for immigration. Exactly. That is what immigration purpose. If I'm moving from a, um, a let's say uh, my native language is not English, right? And if I want to move to a country where uh, maybe English is the first language or maybe preferred language, you can say, right, I will have to show the company or maybe show the government also to get that visa that I know how to communicate. That means it's used for basically the PR purpose. Remember, for immigration. PR is like permanent resident of a country, right? If you want to get PR in Canada or maybe Australia or any other country which where English is spoken, you have to take IELTS general. Whereas if you want to go for your higher studies, focus on IELTS academic. That means it can be used to enroll in universities and other higher educational institute for academic purpose for study purpose. Next, for the life skills, it can be used to apply for certain type of UK visas and indefinite leave to remain or citizenship in UK. So this is specifically for UK, which says that even when you, when, while you will be registering for yourself for, um, the, you know, the IELTS test now, um, before I, uh, maybe, uh, you know, I missed this, I must say that from where you have to do the registration, where you have to register yourself, you have to register yourself on the IDP's website. Once you go and search the dates available, you will get the dates along with the dates, you will also get the slots. Now, the the best thing for IELTS is like IELTS is conducted, I think, every day. I mean, in a month, it's not the some specific dates you will have, right? IELTS is almost conducted every day. I mean, over the month, you can say, 
right and for i i, I can um, i mean i've also seen for paper based format however you will find there is some limited uh, you know the number of days will be very limited maybe only or maybe only 3 days or maybe 4 days ppt format is conducted because as i mentioned that now the students they prefer taking the test on a uh, computer based test rather than going for the paper based format so don't miss where you have to go idp's website right the name is already there you can just try it search for you or you can simply you know um, type idp.com and you will be on that website where you have to register yourself for the test and i'm sure you have understood the difference between ielts general the academic and the life skills so life skills is uh, specifically to gain visa where in uk and for ielts general i mean uh, immigration purpose to any country right and for I ielts academic if you want to go ahead for your higher study if you want to pursue your, your higher studies in a in, in an english speaking country you can say so now the test format that means um, how many questions are there i mean i mean this is a very uh, this is one question which will uh, come in your mind that how many questions are going to be there how much time will i get to answer those questions uh, you know how should i uh, you know respond to the questions or uh, what should be my approach what sort of audios i'm going to have on the listening section right these questions definitely you should have in your mind and let me just clarify all those things by uh, helping you with what the test format is going to be so now uh, we know that we are going to have four different section that is listening reading writing and speaking and that is what you can see and the duration of each section will be different right however if you see for reading and writing you get same time right but the task is going to be different right so starting with the first test that means even on when you start taking the test the very first section of the test is going to be listening section I mean the name itself suggests that you have to listen to something and then you have to answer the question and remember what is important for you to understand here is there is a difference between listening and hearing I mean you just don't have to hear what the speaker is saying or what you have in the audio it's more about understanding and listening means understanding right and uh, most of the time um, i mean i can say these days uh, there are there you know this generally you will come across some questions also that listening skills these days are actually declining um, because people they um, they just want to speak they they don't want to listen to what the other person is saying but if you really want to answer the question here you have to listen to the speaker you have to be with him you have to follow his content now starting with the first section that is listening how much time first of all you will have you will have 40 minutes right now when i say 40 minutes please understand this is a slight thing you must note this is something important for you to note it down right on the paper based format when you take the test right see the entire speaking test definitely it is going to be of 40 minutes but there's a difference when you take the test you know in the ppt format and the cpt format in the paper based format you can say that you will get 40 minutes because 30 minutes the audios will be played right and you will get 10 minutes extra to transfer your answer to the answer sheet so this 10 minutes extra you will get only on the paper based format and that is to transfer your answer to the answer sheet which means initially you will have to write your answers on the question paper and for the computer based format you will have to listen to the you no know, you just have to listen to the audios and you have to keep on typing your answers and then 30 minutes you will get as i mentioned 30 minutes you will get to listen to the audio and answer the question and 10 10 minutes extra only for the paper based format and this is a very important point you have to remember please don't be in dilemma don't get confused that is it that when if i'm taking the computer based format then also i'm getting some extra time to transfer my answer or i'll get some extra time to write my answers no please don't you know don't be in that confusion and thus i am saying that it's completely your call if you say no i i i really feel that you know i should take the paper based format because somewhere i feel that it is more convenient for me it will be more convenient for me please go ahead 
After we are done with the listening section, then the second section of the test will be reading, right? Uh, the name itself suggests that you will have to read some text and you will have to answer the question. How much time you are going to have for the listening section? For listening, you will have 60 minutes. That means one hour. Consider it as one hour or you have one long hour to answer the questions. And there will be three sections. That means you will... You have to read three passages, right, with 40 questions. And the three passages you will read will have approximately like 652,000 words, right? That means it is actually going to be a long, long text. Um, I'm not, I'm not just scaring you. The passages are, the language you will find is pretty easy. Um, something which you can read and follow it once. It's not going to be too complicated as you have on the other standardized tests. If you have heard about the GRE and the GMAT and uh, the SETs, the passages there are a little bit complex, you can say. Um, it could be like shorter uh, than as compared to the IELTS passage, but the language is more complicated. And here, even if the passage is wordy, right, that means the, even if the passages are long, right, but still the language is pretty simple. Next to it, we have the writing section, right? For writing section, we have another 60 minutes. That means one hour more. And you have to complete two tasks. That means in that 60 minutes. So, two tasks that is task one and task two. Task one is generally referred as report writing, right? Uh, which I'll explain obviously, but I'll just give you an overview of what these task one and task two will have. Task two says essay writing. So, report writing is where you will find that you'll have some sort of images. Now, when I say images, it could be a chart, it could be a graph, it could be a line graph, it could be a pie chart, it could be a table, it could be anything. I mean, any pictorial representation and you have to summarize the image. And for task two, essay writing, um, I think um, all of you are, have been doing this essay writing since childhood, right? That means you get a question, you get a prompt and you have to answer the question accordingly. That means your response should be what the, uh, you know, what the question is asking or what the prompt is asking you, uh, basically suggesting you to write. Next comes the last section. So, as I mentioned that it's listening, reading and writing will be taken separately and speaking will be taken separately. Now, um, one more thing I want to say here. Let's say you have registered yourself for, uh, you know, for uh, let's say 6th of November, right? You have registered for the test. Now, it's not important that the speaking will be taken on the same day. The speaking can be taken on the same day or it can be taken a day before or a day after. Generally, you will find uh, when you register yourself for the test, they will give you a buffer of seven days, right? Maybe it will be taken within, you know, maybe seven days before or seven days after, right? But my personal experience says that so long. I mean, you know, I have seen all the students, right, getting either a day, getting the day speaking date either a day before or a day after or most probably recently I have noticed that that maybe the speaking can be taken on the same day. How come? Let's say, for example, uh, if you have your LRW from 2 p.m., right, maybe the speaking test is scheduled at 9 a.m. or 9.30 a.m. Or it could be vice versa that in the first half of the day, that means from 9 a.m. you have your LRW, right? That means listening, reading and writing and speaking is taken in the second half. That means it's from 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. or even maybe 4 p.m. Why? Because we know that the duration of the test is very short. The duration of the test is just 11 to 14 minutes, which means within 50 minutes, the entire speaking test will be done. But still, even if the test is too short, right, it's a, I mean, just such a short duration, but still the test has three different parts, right? The three sections are, will have a variety of questions, right? And it will be a face-to-face -face interview with the person. Now, when I'm saying three different sections, right, we will understand what the different section, what sort of questions we are going to have in a very detailed manner. So, let's start with the reading section. So, if we talk about the number of sections, that means the number of passages you will fine um, on the test, right? So, it will have three different sections. That means three different passages. Sections or passages easily you can say. And the type of text, that means the type of passages you will find could be, um, it could be some descriptive passages, could be some factual passages, some discursive passage or something analytical. 
So these are the four different types of texts you will encounter while you read the passages. And these passages, these texts are basically taken from some uh, books or from some newspaper or magazines or some other sources. But you will find that all the texts, despite whatever be the, you know, be the type, it could be whether it is descriptive, it is factual, it is something analytical, right? All the texts are going to be something related to the academic context. That means nothing from outside, no other, you know, no outside knowledge will be there. It's just that sticking to the text and the text is going to be something related to the academic context, right? So it will be easy for you to solve the questions because anyway, the purpose you are, the purpose you are taking the test test to show that yes you can understand this language that means you can understand what the content of the piece of text or that specific passage was the number of questions so in total you will find that there will be 40 questions for the reading test right with approximately 13 to 14 questions in each section that means per passage you can say you may have 13 to 14 questions and that makes the total number of questions as 40 next the time limit you will have 60 minutes so you will get this combined duration of 60 minutes, one hour to solve the question. You can always divide the time. And I mean, I believe that the first and the second passages are actually going to be relatively, you can say, you know, easier than the third one. Generally, I have seen students also dividing the time as, you know, kind of maybe 20 minutes per passage, right? But is it important to divide this time and I mean, is it going to make your answers more effective? I believe that the first passage may be what if you're able to solve the first passage only in 15 minutes, right? So you're anyway saving some time to solve. That means you're saving some time for the second passage and the third passage since it is going to be the most challenging one. That means the most difficult one. Maybe instead of 20 minutes, you can spend there 25 minutes or 30 minutes. So that's completely your call. So the division of the time, please don't emphasize on and don't focus on that I'll be solving. I have to complete one passage in 20 minutes. No, because they will give you the entire one hour to deal with or to solve all those 40 questions. That means to solve three passages. Now, let's learn about the facts for uh, the reading section, right? See, if you really want to get a good, good scores, I mean, um, I have seen in my, I can say uh, from my experience, I have seen students, they're very, some students are very good at reading, some students, they often face some sort of problem while solving the questions. And thus, if you want to get a good score, maybe if you want to get a perfect band, what do you say, 9 band or 8.5 band, right? Please make a habit of practicing more or maybe different varieties of passages or, you know, solving different uh, sort of questions. When you say different types of questions, so the reading passage is actually going to have different types of questions and the study materials from wherever you get. You will find there are n number of resources online available for free tests, right? So the more you practice, the more confident you will get on the test day. You will feel that I'm, you know, I'm able to solve the passages easily on the test day. And just you are preparing yourself for that big day. It's not just solving the passages today or tomorrow. It's like on the test, are you able to solve those passages? And thus, first, when it comes to practice first, solve some passages as untimed, then time yourself and see, like maybe set a timer of 20 minutes. Are you able to solve one passage in 20 minutes? Then you will say that, okay, fine, I was able to solve this passage in just 15 minutes, right? Or maybe no, I took 25 minutes instead of 20 minutes, right? So you have taken either less time or you have taken more time. So this will help you to decide on the test there that what, what level of passages or what sort of passages will take more time for me or what sort of passages it is going to take less time for me. Whether it's a descriptive one, whether it's the factual passages, it's the analytical one or something discursive. Now, remember that the IELTS reading test assesses your reading skills and not your knowledge of the subject, specific subject matter of the text. That means the IELTS reading section is not asking or is not evaluating your knowledge. That means what do you know about the passage or the reading section, right? It's all about the piece of text, what they have given you. Have you understood it properly? And thus we can say that no specific knowledge is required when you solve the question. Why? Because Remember, the answer must come from the passage itself. Please do not add any extra information or brainstorm any content related to the subject of the passage. Or that means you can say that outside knowledge, even if you, if it is coming in your mind, you just need to, you know, uh, stay away from that because it will definitely deviate your mind.
and if you are making if you are actually choosing the answers right on the basis of your assumption trust me it is definitely going to be a wrong answer so when dealing with the question where you have re to refer to where what you have to rely on you just have to rely on the text given to you for that specific question Next, it also uh, you know the the, uh, the IELTS reading test evaluates your ability to read and understand different types of text, right? As well as your ability to locate and understand specific information. Let's say for when you read the question, right? If you came across a specific word, then next step will be you will go back to the passage to locate that from which part of the passage or which part of the paragraph the answer will come and after you read it then you will have to understand it thus you will be able to answer this question correctly if your understanding is not clear if your concept what you have read if it is not clear in your head definitely you won't be able to answer the question or maybe you tend to choose that wrong answer and thus you will lose point there right and also they will see whether you are able to identify the main ideas or follow the development in the ideas in the text development of the idea means i mean in a passage will always you know talk about something specific or one specific thing it could be an explanation or it could be uh, something description or maybe some facts stated so you have to make sure that you remember only those facts which is given in the passage and how the ideas were developed throughout the passage this will help you so occasionally you will occasionally when i'm saying that once in a while i have seen questions which says that what is the main idea you know what topic or the passage was discussing about you may encounter the such questions also right thus it is essential for you to remember all the information which was given in the passage or else otherwise i think the best strategy for most of the questions because since you have different types of questions you know solving those varieties of questions i mean the strategy is going to be different for example i would say there is one question where you'll find that it says true false not given there's another question which you will say is asking you to you know just complete a summary so these two questions are different if the question is asking about whether the statement is true whether it is false or whether it was not discussed in the passage right is different than the summary question which is asking you to just summarize a part of the paragraph next each question in ielts reading test worth one point and your overall score for the reading is converted into ielts band which ranges from 0 to 9 and your score is based on the number of correct answer exactly so what you are trying to maximize here if you want to maximize your band that is score so you have to maximize the number of correct answers on the reading test another important point is time management how important time management is it's really important and for that reason i mentioned that you should solve passages both as timed and untimed when you are solving the passages untimed that means you are learning the strategies to deal with the question once you feel that you are ready that you know the strategy how to deal with different question type on the reading section please time yourself right to see that are you able to complete all the three passages in the given time that means are you able to complete all three passages in 60 minutes are you able to solve all those 40 questions for the three passages in that given duration next since you have 60 minutes to complete all three passages you must pace yourself and not spend too much of time on each question i mean uh, sometimes just you know for example let's say you started solving a question and you feel that oh i have spent it i think three three to four minutes on this question only and that's just a single question is that worth no what you should do should you stay on that question and waste your time no so what should be the best approach there i will leave this question for the time being and i'll move on to the next question maybe later on when i'm done with the easy questions that specific question you can simply consider it as a difficult question and remember difficult question means either there are two situations either even if you spend five six minutes right you may reach to the correct answer right but you will get that chance of missing the easy questions thus once you're done with the course i mean by the end of the course you should be in a situation to identify specifically i would say for the reading section you must be in a situation to identify that which question types are easy for you and which question types are difficult so that on the test day you segregate them you should know that this question type really all the time i have seen that you know i have faced a lot of difficulty while dealing with the question so what i'll do is i'll do this question maybe later on 
right or maybe i'll come back to this question later on the easy one okay fine this is a, this question is going to be very easy for me i remember when i was practicing so it's all about what you have done while you were preparing yourself i remember when i was practicing or when i was preparing this was one question which i used to you know solve when i used to get all answers correct so these decisions you have to take on the test day it's not just randomly answering the question remember um next if we talk about uh, the questions in the ielts reading test come in various format so we have multiple choice we have matching uh, we have matching information matching uh, features you have matching headings you have matching ideas then you have sentence completion you have summary completion you have true false not given and it is really important for you to familiarize yourself with these different types of questions so i can say that the different types of questions so total of approximately you can say you will find there are 14 different question types on the reading section and for each passage you need to remember for each passage maybe one passage will have a uh, one passage may have multiple choice question along with that they also the passage also have summary completion question maybe there are only two question types maybe for the second passage you have true false not given along with true false not given you also have matching headings question right and sentence completion so three different question types i have seen on the second passage so it completely varies right and this variation you will be able to see once you start practicing the passage in a full fledged manner so next you must record your answers on a separate answer sheet following the instruction provided so all the instructions will be given whether you are taking the paper based format or you are taking the computer based format so you have to make sure that what instruction is say right so it is crucial to transfer your answer accurately as incorrect placement or format can result in lost point that means in what situation you can lose the points there that means you know you have answered that question initially let's say for example in the paper based format you wrote the answers right and then you got that option of transferring the answer and then maybe you are not a you know your um, maybe you found that i'm not you know um, the format is incorrect or the spelling is incorrect so all those things you have to cross check there was one mistake i remember very carefully from uh, you know uh, one of my student what he did um he was he solved the third passage first right he said that ma'am since the third passage is the most difficult one i will solve it first and then i'll come back to the first and the second passage however if you ask me i will always recommend you to start from the first passage it's okay to start with the first passage and then move towards the third passage what happened with him the third passage question started from 24 and he started what he did when he was writing the answer he wrote that answer on number 22 onwards right so what happened the entire thing was you know messed up and at the end he found that no my answers were correct and then erasing why i'm saying erasing so remember if you are taking the paper based format you will have to write your answers of listening and reading necessarily with a pencil however on the writing section you get an option of writing it with a pen or a pencil but my suggestion is always to use a pencil even on the writing section if you are taking a paper based format why is that because if your work is untidy obviously the evaluator may not find it appropriate if you ask me as a teacher if any writing if i see is in a, you know written on a paper and i don't find it or you know i don't find it very tidy i mean if you write with a pen you have that habit maybe something you want to erase if you're writing with a pencil you can erase it with the help of a eraser right but if you're writing with a pen obviously you will cross it off and that cross off lot of cross off will actually make your writing look very you know very untidy and as a reader i would never prefer to read the such writing right so thus please Uh, understand or please remember that if you are considering the paper based format on the writing section even though if you get that option of writing it with a pen prefer pencil over pen and thus i am saying that here on the maybe you know when you are writing your answers with the help of a pencil you would have changed it the student might have changed it obviously right but problem was time by the time he finished all the three passages and he realized this that the you know the question numbers were wrong or incorrect or i filled up you know i have actually wrote the answer at the wrong place right he didn't had those that time to erase and then write the answer in the correct position and thus i want to say one thing that please follow the sequence of the passage it's okay please start from the first passage then solve the second passage and then move on to the third one 
yeah if you if you really want to give your best on the third passage which is a difficult one one thing you can do easily is um you know try to spend less time or try to solve the first two passages quickly so that you can start with the third one on an maybe at a very right time and you have sufficient time to uh, solve all the questions or attempt all the questions correctly for the last passage so let's understand about the writing section for the writing section we know that we have two tasks we have writing task one which is called report writing and which is writing we have writing task two which is called essay writing right for the task one we know that we'll have some sort of you know kind of pictorial representation and you just have to summarize the information in your own words right so the moment i say summarize the information in your own words which means you don't have to add anything from your own no extra information should be given and talking about the minimum number of words so you can see it's written that 150 so minimum number of words is 150 right on the other hand for the essay writing on essay writing you will find that a question will be given with a you know followed by a task instruction so the task instruction could be something like whether you agree or disagree what is your opinion about it since the question will clearly state that you have to take a position unlike writing task 1 that is report writing you will have to make sure that on writing task 2 you are building an argument you are giving your own opinion about the prompt right so it says you will be presented with a topic or question and must write an essay presenting an argument right when you have an argument about something that means what is your position of the prompt and it's not only just telling your position or giving your opinion on it but you also have to give the reasons that means the evidences for the position and evidences must also you know include some sort of examples when you say the examples that means some relevant examples or incidents you can write which is related to the argument which is supporting your position for the prompt next the essay should be formal and well structured that means you're not supposed to use any sort of informal language and you have to make sure that your writing is appropriate it has a flow it has been developed right so there are certain criteria on the basis of which your writing task one and two is evaluated those things we will learn when we go to the writing module and when we learn about the writing module so let's learn about um some facts about the writing section so the total duration that means the total time given will be 60 minutes and when it comes to the division of time that means how much time should i spend on task one and task two it is recommended that on task one you spend only 20 minutes if you feel that you have you know you're able to uh, complete task one in 15 minutes that's okay you can spend rest of the time on task two why is it that because writing task 2 has more number of words that is 250 words right and on writing task 1 you just have 150 words right so it's not only about the number of words obviously it takes more time if i if i just give you an image and if i ask to ask you to describe that image you can easily pull up the features and write but if I give you an essay topic and if I ask you, you give your opinion about it. So you will have to work on it more. That means you will have to uh, brainstorm the examples. You have to think about the ideas. You have to think that, you know, how the information uh, should be arranged while I'm writing this essay. Because I have to write 250 words. I must have enough content in my mind to go up to 250 words. Right. And thus, it's always suggested that 20 minutes for task one. Yes. And the remaining 40 minutes you can spend on task two. That would be a good time. What if you're, what if you want to spend 45 minutes and 15 minutes there on task one? That, that's completely fine. That's completely your call. They are not going to divide the time. However, this division you have to make. And why this is important? This is important so that you, in that 60 minutes, that means by the end of that one hour, you must have completed both task one and task two. So for task one, you're required to write 150 words and for task two, aim for 250 words, right? Then we have the writing section is scored again on a scale of zero to nine with half band increment. So the criteria for evaluating all the four sections, you know, they are same, right? But when it comes to, uh, you know, evaluating your writing and speaking, obviously there are certain factors which we must know or there are certain factors on the basis of which the evaluators are going to read and 
uh, you know, give a band or give a point to your, uh, you know, response. For listening and reading, we have seen it's it's all about the number of correct answers you have, right? But for the writing and speaking section, it's be, it becomes a little bit, you can say, uh, you know, kind of complicated that how the reader is going to, uh, you know, read and, uh, you know, what what should, what will be his perception or opinion about your response so that accordingly he uh, gives a score to your writing but whatever the you know what whatever the thing is you need to remember that the criteria have to be fulfilled all the four criteria now when i'm mentioning four criteria these four criteria we will be learning in detailed manner in the modules now your writing is assessed based on criteria such as task achievement right cohesion coherence lexical resource grammatical range and accuracy so these are the factors Right. And what are these? Uh, why it is important? Um, I think for this, we will learn the when we will start, when we will learn about the writing model, you will know that on what, you know, how, what should be the task achievement or, um, you know, what, what is, what do you mean by coherence and cohesion? What do you mean by lexical resource? What do you mean by grammatical range and accuracy? These things in a detailed manner, because only if you know something, you will be able to fulfill that criteria. Right. Next, writing in a formal style is essential, particularly task two essays. You should avoid using slang, contraction and informal language. Please avoid using the contraction. I mean, um, yeah, by mistake, I have seen students instead of and, right, they write this and. But is it correct? No. Is it acceptable on writing task here on IELTS? No. Right. Even, you know, I have seen students using, avoid using those signs and these contraction to make sure that you're not losing point, at least for these silly mistakes. Then informal language. Again, there's something what we call as tone of writing. So you have to make sure that the tone of the writing is always formal, not informal tone. So for task one in the academic model, right, should accurately and concisely describe the visual data right? That means it should be very concise. Concise means again, if the minimum number of words was 150 and if you're writing 155 or 160 words, is that fine? I think that's completely fine. It's only about the minimum requirement what they are saying. I mean, even if you write 155 words and the content is good, every point was, I mean, all of the points of the visual, uh, all of the points of the data or the graph was actually included in your writing. So that is considered as correct. That means you'll be scored on a very good score. You can say you will, you're not going to lose point there just because of number of words. Next, task two essays should fully address the question or topic or provide well-structured arguments and evidence. That means for writing task two, right? It's like you should follow what the question is and according to the question, your argument should be built. And it's like when your argument is built, the reasons, the example, the evidence, it should be very concrete. And to perform well on writing tasks, right, that means IELTS writing, practice essay on various topics and familiarize yourself with different types of visual data. That means it is very important that you practice. I mean, this is one section, I believe, um, that writing section is where getting a band of maybe 7, 7.5 will take a lot of effort. So never ever, you know, um, hesitate from writing so many. Maybe you, before the exam, you can write 5 to 10 questions right, for writing task two. Writing task one is very easy because it's not about your opinion. It's just you have to summarize something, right? But when it comes to writing task two, right, you will have, first of all, you will see the questions, uh, you know, available will be like variety of questions based on technology, health, or uh, maybe, you know, wildlife or family or maybe transportation or anything in uh, whatever question, right? So you should practice at least one question, right, from all the common topics, which is there for the writing task too. Then pay attention to your grammar and vocabulary usage. Yeah, of course, this is also important, right? Um, speaking English and writing English is completely different. What you speak in your day-to-day -day life, trust me, it is like informal, clearly I can say, right? So you have to be very cautious that the way you speak English, you're not writing in the same manner. And then the vocabulary, that means if you are using appropriate words that means you're using suitable words for the context next a diverse and precise vocabulary can enhance that means increase your score next we have keep some time for proofreading um so this writing is not just you start writing and you submit your paper or you're done last at least one to two minutes you must keep for proofreading 
what do you mean by proofreading that means you are making sure that your writing that means your response is grammatically error free there is no grammatical error in the writing now let's learn about the listening section in a very detailed manner these are a few things or these are the few points which you really have to remember right when you're learning for uh, when, when you're preparing yourself for the test the first point is duration right duration now you know from the previous slide that means from the test format that the duration of the test is going to be approximately 40 minutes right and in a way you can say it's like 30 minutes of listening time that means 30 minutes you will get to listen to the audio right including the time allowed for listening to the audios and answering the question again the one difference here i would say is um yes you have to answer the question right whether you're taking the paper based format or this you know the computer based format right it's just on the paper based format also initially you have to write the answer the 10 minutes extra what we mentioned or what discussed what we discussed about was while you're transferring the answer that means you will get from the paper based format you will get those you know that time to transfer your answer to the answer sheet that 10 minutes is not to answer the question remember and thus we say that it's just 30 minutes only here next section so the listening test consists of four section right each with a different recording audio right and the topics here definitely is going to uh, you know vary from because maybe you will um, you will find that the first audio uh, will be different from the second audio the second audio is going to be something different from the third and the fourth audio right but uh, these topics you'll find is something related to the common situation that means something in your day-to-day -day life you might encounter in sp English speaking environment next so when we talk about the question type so there are various types of questions you will see like you will have you know, multiple choice questions you will have uh, you know labeling maps or diagram you will have sentence completion short answer question you will have notes completion you will have flow charts question all of them right and you'll just have to choose the correct answer or fill in the blanks based on the information you hear from the audio again you hear from the audio but you have to understand that means you have to listen to the speaker and all these instructions whatever the question type is it will be given you're not going to have any question which will ask you to you know just um, maybe write some descriptive answer no nothing right if all the questions are going to be more of like objective right either it will be like you will have you'll find that on the cbt format uh, you will have to you'll have some options of drop down right or you just have to type the answer right on the paper based format again you will not have that drop down option obviously but you'll have to listen and you have to just write your response now talking about the recording types i think uh, this is very important for you to understand some audios you will find like i will be very uh, specific here the first and the third audio please make a note of it that means the first and the third audio you will find that will be a conversation right and conversation itself means maybe more than one people right so maybe uh, you will find that uh, you know um, in the third audio of a, a, a maybe a professor is talking to a student or a, a librarian is talking to a student regarding something in the first audio uh, you will listen to audios like maybe let's say for example if you have to you know if you have to um, book a table for a family dinner you'll call the restaurant right you'll call the restaurant and you'll say that you know what is the procedure or uh, what menu you will have all those description you're going to take and first and the second audio you will find is will be completely based on day to day life that means some, some something about the social context please remember i will specify again by writing that means the first and the second audio right you will find will be based on some social context that means day to day life right and the third and the fourth audio you will find will be academic audios what do you mean by academic audios that means real life situations from university you will say and that's the reason when i said that maybe on the third audio you will find a professor is talking to the student or a librarian is talking to a student or two students are talking amongst themselves it could be anything it could be any situation but understand that those situations are actually taken from real life you know from real life maybe something uh, a script from the college or an audio from the college kind of 
and thus these conversation that means conversation between two people right that is specifically for the first and the third audio and monologues monologues that means could be you will find that in the fourth audio right the a, a professor is giving a lecture about um, maybe a theory or anything i mean any lecture it could be a lecture or it could be a speech or it could be some announcement uh, given by uh, maybe there's some announcement made on behalf of the management or maybe some instruction um, is you know is being given so it could be related to any subject from the university or the college so hope you will remember that the first and the third audio first will be a conversation the second and the fourth audios will be monologue monologue itself means one speaker and the first and the second audio will be based on some social context day to day life and the third and the fourth audio is going to be based on the real life situations from universities these are the types of recordings you will listen and these are the types of audios you will listen on the listening section now let's talk about the accents right um obviously there's a lot of question about the accents that that what sort of accent will i have um is it going to be something you know because let's say for example if i'm from uh, if i'm from india right so will i expect that the audios are going to be you know the, the speakers are going to be uh, or the audios will be uh, you know taken from here or maybe something from uh, my country or the you know i'll be able to follow the accent or the you know the speaker will have indian accent no here since we know that the test uh, is actually trying you know to test you whether you are following the content whether you are following the accent hence it's very important for you to be aware of the type of accents like it could be american accent it could be a british accent you can have like a canadian accent so these different accents you have to think of now how will i be able to differentiate between an american uh, you know english and and uh, british english or maybe an american english or uh, somebody who is from uh, who's, who's like from canada and it's a canadian english when you listen to the audio if let's say two speakers are speaking you can easily differentiate right by listening to the audio itself that whether it's a british one or whether it's an american one and if not let's say even even because that's not your job right this is not they're not going to ask you any question related to that whether this accent was american or uh, you know american or british right they're not going to ask you a question it's just that you have to understand or you have to listen to how the speaker how the first speaker you know his accent was different from the second one that is the only thing and anyways i would say you know because ultimately my aim is to answer the question so whatever accents you have and i mean despite of like whether it's a british one it's a canadian it's an australian english it's american whatever it is doesn't matter to me what is my job what is my task is whether i am able to follow the content whether i am able to get the idea whether i am able to answer the questions or not now let's understand some facts about the listening section right um talking about the scoring right we know that uh the scoring of the test is done on a scale of 0 to 9 that means we generally refer it as band right and the band score for the sections are going to be from 0 to 9 this is minimum right you can say and this is maximum and with the half score band what it says the first point that means the increment will be from 0.5 right for example uh, maybe on listening you get um 7.5 bands right or you got maybe a uh, you know 8 band or uh, you had 8.5 band and this relies on basically this relies on the number of questions you have answered correctly and for this maybe when we will learn about the listening section right you can see the score chart easily and identify that okay how many questions should you know should be correct so that i get maximum band or 8.5 band and is it like if i'm expecting 9 band you know how many correct answer must be there so that I have, so that i get a 9 band that means a perfect score there okay so the second point says it is designed to be completed in real time right that means you will not have any extra time neither you can listen to the audio again and again that is what the third point is emphasizing on it's not that if you were not able to attempt question number 5 you can go back to the audio and repeat it 
we cannot the audios will be played only once and then at that point itself you have to answer the question which means neither the audios are going to be played once that means neither you will get that chance to attempt that question again and again because it will move forward the questions are not going to you know can you can go back and recheck obviously if you get that extra time that extra time is just to transfer your answer not to answer the, those questions again next there are no opportunities to repeat or review the audio so it's crucial that you listen to the audios for the first time that means you listen to the audios carefully the first time let's go ahead with the speaking section now so um speaking section will last for we know that approximately 11 to 14 minutes it's a very short test although now um still since it has three different parts let's understand what those three parts are going to have so for part 1 which is referred as introduction and interview right so generally um the examiner will introduce saying that this is my name and uh, you know you tell me about yourself and then the general question so not necessarily the examiner will ask you to introduce yourself right it could be like the question in the first part can be uh, based on like day to day uh, conversation you can say like uh, which city are you from which country are you from what do you like about your city so or uh, you know maybe who came to drop you here at the center even this can be one question you have to answer the question in the first part in a very precise manner the first part will last for approximately 4 to 5 minutes and that could be n number of short questions you can say do you like reading uh, what are your hobbies uh, tell me something about your school days who is your best friend are you closer to your family or friends so these sort of questions in the first round and the examiner introduces themselves and will ask you to do the same but this is not necessarily as i mentioned right you will have to answer a question about familiar topics like home family studies work and general interest whatever you are interested in now talking about part 2 which is called individual long term and along with that you can also call it as a cue card round because you will get a card literally the examiner will give you a card right and will give you some time to prepare that means you get a preparation time and you have a speaking time and the second part will last for approximately 3 to 4 minutes and for 1 minute this preparation and you know making that notes along with the cue card the examiner will also provide you with a pencil and a paper and that means you're free to make notes and not only free to make notes that means you're also allowed to refer to the notes whenever you want that means followed up by 2 minutes of speaking so speaking time would be 2 minutes remember and preparation time would be 1 minute and 2 minutes is like maximum time you can speak next after 2 minutes the examiner may ask one or two follow up question so the examiner may ask the examiner may not ask the follow up questions and possible that he will directly go to the third part of the test which is called the discussion round for the third part of the test which is two way discussion and the discussion round also lasts for approximately 4 to 5 minutes and the examiner will actually try to engage you in a more in depth discussion right of the topic of the cue card that means whatever topic whatever question you had for the cue card in the discussion round the questions are going to be related to the same right so question in this section often relate to broader issues abstract ideas and social concerns now what is this note so the speaking test is assessed based on four, four criteria so these are the four criteria on the basis of which your response is evaluated by the examiner right fluency and coherence how fluent you were when you started speaking right how the ideas were flowing right was there any flow of ideas or randomly you were picking up the ideas then lexical resource that means vocabulary i think now so far you are aware of this term because we also had this term for writing so vocabulary is not only important for the writing section but also for the speaking part next the grammatical range and accuracy and pronunciation which is a really really important factor because if your pronunciation is not appropriate obviously the examiner will never understand that what you are trying to say or which specific word it was and you might face some similar problem in the listening section 
right once you start with the listening section if you do not follow the pronunciation obviously you will not know that what the speaker was saying so something similar will happen here with the examiner if the pronunciation of words you know is not appropriate then the examiner will never understand that what is the what was that word actually and what is the meaning of that word and if the examiner is not following it right obviously that could be one point where you are going to lose some marks so uh, it's equally important for the pronunciation is equally important because if the examiner is not able to understand what the word was or what the meaning of that word could be, the message will not be conveyed. And the speaking is test is actually taken so that, you know, whatever you are, whatever the answer or whatever responses you have there, right, the examiner should be or the examiner must understand the message or should get the message properly. Now, each criterion is scored on a scale of 0 to 9 and the score are then averaged to determine the overall band score, right? So, this is very important for us to understand that how these scorings are supposed to be done. For this scoring, again, um, since these are the different factors, you can say out of 100%, we can have like 25% for the fluency and coherence. You can have 25% for the lexical resource. You can have 25% for the grammatical range and accuracy and 25% for pronunciation. So that makes it 100%. And similarly, you have for the writing section also. For all the four criteria, what, what is given, what was mentioned, right? You have like kind of 25% weightage to the fact. Now, let's talk about some facts, right? So, this IELTS speaking test is actually a face-to-face -face interview format, right? And that means it's a like a real conversation with an examiner. Um, but during the pandemic, I remember, and not during the pandemic, I think uh, sometimes occasionally I have seen students saying that, ma'am, uh, my speaking was like kind of a visual interaction, not a face-to-face -face interaction. And that visual interaction, obviously, it is going to be with the examiner. It's just that face-to-face -face means you are sitting in front of a person, right, live. And visual interaction, that means visual speaking means simply that the examiner will be on the, you know, it will be on the system, but it will be a live test. It will not be any recorded or in, uh, any recorded test or the exam or the questions the examiner is going to ask is not. So, you can just uh, consider it as a, you know, live video call with a person or uh, if the speaking is scheduled as a visual test, right? Next, the speaking test aims to stimulate real life communication situation. Assessing your ability to understand and respond to a spoken language. That means in day-to-day -day life, whether you can talk in English or not, that is what they are testing you on. And how you're responding, right? That means whether you're understanding and responding properly to a question or properly your response is appropriate with the whatever the other person was trying to say. Let's say if the question was, uh, which country are you from, right? right? And your answer was something uh, not related to the country. That means that is a very clear point to understand that you do not follow what this language English is. You couldn't understand that the question was asking that you are from which country. And to test these skills, so that is what this speaking test is basically testing you. That how much you are, you know, familiar with this language English. Next, questions in the speaking test can cover wide range of subjects, but they generally revolve around everyday topics, academic subjects and some abstract ideas. Could be from anywhere, but those questions are like general and again, no prior knowledge or no prior information is required here to respond. That means if you're answering the question, it's not that you must learn something beforehand before you come for the speaking test. Next, pronunciation is an essential aspect of the speaking test. Clear and intelligible pronunciation contributes to a higher score. Clear means a clarity should be there and intelligible means something which is easy to understand, somebody who is able to understand. Next, managing time effectively in part two is important. Yes, obviously it is important that how much time you should spend on each question. Right. Since for the cue card, that means for the second round, along with the topic, you're also going to have some sub question. And what is important is, are you answering all the question, whatever was asked in the part two? If not, you may lose some point there. So you should aim to speak for two minutes as speaking less can impact the score. That means obviously speaking less can affect your score. Next, while there's no specific syllabus for a speaking test, 
practicing with sample questions speaking partners or language instructor can help you to become more confident and improve your performance yes what is required on the test day is lot of confidence right lot of positive attitude right and the way you are speaking that means going slow just you know don't uh, i've seen many a times in the response most of the student they keep on speaking without any pause without any break right uh no that's an i think that that's a very inappropriate way of speaking you should have several pauses you should stop because somewhere back in the mind you know you are somewhere translating the information making sentences everything you are doing patently so for the speaking section i think understand the format practicing and whom you can practice with you can easily self practice why because let's say if you do not have any friend or you do not have any language instructor right you can always turn on the recorder take up any question there are n number of questions available right for the resources online if you search right record yourself and then listen to what you were speaking and check the flaws that means find the loopholes on in your response and what are the loopholes you can identify for the first part of the question you know that okay fine it will ha it has to be uh, completed in 4 to 5 minutes so i'm not like kind of you know uh, maybe speaking for a long time speaking for 5 6 minutes there no then for the cue card uh, was i speaking for 2 minutes or you know did i stop at 1 minute so th maybe uh, that is one thing you which you can notice and maybe in the discussion round you can record and see whether my answers were up to the mark whether my answers were appropriate or not All right now we'll talk about the scoring guidelines for the fourth section for the IELTS listening test right we know that it comprises of 40 questions each correct answer is awarded one mark right scores out of 40 are converted to the IELTS 9 band scale and the scores are reported whole and half bands right now marks out of 40 so band rate score okay if let's say for example if you had 16 to 17 correct answers right then you get band 5 but are you aiming for band 5 i would say no right so let's talk about how will i get or how many correct answers i must have so that you know i get band 8 so you must have at least 35 to 36 correct answers and all of you should always desire to get a higher score don't keep a target of 6 band if you keep a target of 6 band you'll land with a score of band 5 so keep a target of 8 that means minimum maybe if you're targeting 8 band you can get maybe 7.5 right or 7 band which is okay but anyways getting 8 on listening and reading section is not a challenge only if you're practicing enough for the reading section if we see so we have again 40 questions right we have each uh, correct answer uh, was awarded one mark right and again 40 questions are that means the score out of 40 are converted or no to a band scale right that is ielts 9 band scale and scores are again reported in whole and a half band and marks out of 40 if you say band 5 again 18 to 50 so are we planning for band 5 i would say no so how will i get a uh, band 8 or maybe band 9 so if you have 35 to 36 correct answers right you get band 8 right and again if you have uh, let's say for example uh, uh, 39 correct answers right so you get band 9 and aim for band 9 if on reading section because again uh, as i mentioned that since there are varieties of question but if you really prepare properly if you really practice properly getting this band is not a very difficult task now for the listening and the speaking test right we know that the criteria are different as compared to the listening and the reading part on the listening and the reading section it's all about whether i mean there are only two things either your answer is right or wrong right it's not about analyzing and evaluating but for writing task that means and the speaking task right the evaluators are going to evaluate your essay right the evaluators are going to evaluate your the examiner will be evaluating your response that how you have responded to the question now for the ielts writing task examiners use assessment criteria to award a score for each of the following criteria So the first one is task achievement and task response both for task 1 and task 2 because we know that the 
the requirement or the instruction for task one is different and the requirement for task two is different right task one is more about just summarizing and task two is more about your opinion and then coherence and cohesion right that is about the flow of ideas right then we have lexical resource grammatical ring so for all these as i mentioned we can give weightage as 25% so you have 25% for task achievement and task response you have for coherence and cohesion 25% and again for lexical resource you have 25% and then 25% you have for grammar range and accuracy and how the writing task basically how the score is evaluated right this is very crucial for you to understand for writing it's not that one evaluator will be reading and will be you know giving you a band right that means you will find that two different that means two evaluators will be evaluating your task one and task two independently and your final score will be the average of the score that means your final score for writing task will be the average score or band given by the evaluators that means the total score is not going to rely only on how the first evaluator feel your responses if first evaluator has given you maybe let's say for example his score is 6.5 and the other evaluator gives you 7 band then your overall score will be considered as the average score given by the two evaluators right so what is important anyways these are just the you know these are just the scoring criteria this is how the scoring is done but what is your focus your focus is that you give your best that means don't give that opportunity you know to the evaluators to reduce or you know to deduct some points there maybe if i read your essay i may give a different band and if the other faculty other teacher is re reading your response can have a different perception but whatever you know whatever band i am giving and whatever the second evaluator is giving idp considers both of the evaluators score as important and that is the reason the final score becomes the average of it and for the speaking task you have examiners use assessment criteria to award a score for each of the following four areas that is again fluency right that means fluency and coherence then you have lexical resource grammatical range and accuracy and pronunciation these are the four factors so if you see something common in IELTS writing and the speaking section, right, that is one thing lexical resource vocabulary becomes important not only for the uh, writing task but also for the speaking task and gra grammar, those grammatical errors also are important for both the writing task and the speaking task. Now that we have reached to the end of this video, here's a brief recap. The IELTS exam is 2 hours and 45 minutes long and can be taken either offline or online. It has four sections to assess your English proficiency skills. The listening section is 40 minutes with 30 minutes for audio and questions and the extra 10 minutes to transfer answer for paper-based test. The reading section is 60 minutes long with three parts and 40 questions. The writing section is of 60 minutes and has two tasks. Task 1 is report writing and task 2 is essay writing. Lastly, the speaking section involves a face-to-face -face interview with the examiner and is divided into three parts, each with a variety of questions. Each section is scored out of 9 and the average of these scores determine the final band score for each section. For the listening and reading sections, scores out of 40 are converted to IELTS 9 band scale. For the writing section, scores are based on four criteria: task achievement and task response, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy. For the speaking section, scores are based on four criteria: fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy, and pronunciation. We hope you like this video. For a comprehensive preparatory course on IELTS, please click on the link in the pinned comment and visit the study abroad section on Great Learning Academy.